In Matthew 28, Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18, it's one of the last things that Jesus says. It's the last thing Jesus says before he goes to heaven. It's the last uh, it's also recorded in Mark 16, verse 17 and 19, which is where I'm actually going to be going with this. But Jesus had completed his earthly mission, and then he ascended. Jesus had completed his earthly mission. And as Pastor Rick pointed out in church this morning, which if you weren't there, it was the greatest church service ever in the history of church services, which is what I always say when somebody misses something. Because, yeah. But, uh, no, it was pretty good. Um, Matthew, uh, Jesus started, the, the New Testament began when Jesus ascended into heaven. It didn't start with John the Baptist. He was arguably the greatest of the Old Testament prophets, certainly the last one. But the New Testament doesn't start with Jesus beginning his earthly ministry. It starts with Jesus ascending into heaven. And then shortly thereafter, the Holy Spirit coming, that same Spirit of Christ that was in Jesus, Jesus the person, Jesus the body, Christ, the Spirit of God within him. That same Christ then came into the world to indwell in us yeah. on the day of Pentecost. But Jesus finished his earthly ministry. And you'd think that the last couple things he said would be pretty important. I would think. You know, it's his last shot to say something on the earth in a physical body. And he says, it says in Matthew 28, Jesus came to them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. You know what he was doing there? He was showing that he had the authority. Right. That that, that was his. He was showing what he had done and who he was. And he was telling you, who he was. Yeah. One last time. Then in the book of Mark, it's recorded as uh, just before he left, the last thing he said, Mark 16, verse 17 and 19, and these sh signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Amen. He, the very last thing he did was establish who he was and the authority. And then he passed it on to us. Amen. And then he passed it on to us. Yes. The body, Jesus ascended into heaven having completed his work but the spirit of god that power he left with us he left it with you he left it with you he left it with kevin he left it with bob he left it with us all of us so we tend to get hung up on what Jesus said we would be able to do in his name. Like the casting out of devils and, and the whole list. But what I want to talk about is uh, that first sentence. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Follow. That's the key word in here. When you are walking you are leaving a path of where you have been the Bible says that whoever puts his hand to the plow and then looks back isn't fit why because if you're plowing and you're looking behind you that row is going to be all over the place you need to keep your eyes fixed keep your eyes upon Jesus keep your eyes fixed and while you are focused on your task, 
and having that communication, that intimacy with God, while you are focused on that, there will be things that are just the natural consequences of that. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. So first, there comes believing. And then, all these other things. It's like Jesus said, it, it's like, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added. What Jesus was talking about, the things that we think about on a day-to-day -day basis, the, the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the world around us, all these different cares. And Jesus said, well, your Father in heaven already knows that. He said, but seek first the kingdom. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom, and all the rest of that stuff will just happen, right? Right. Right. right? This is the same thought. He's having the same thought. He said, believe. Believe in what? Believe that he did what he said he was going to do. Right. Yeah. Believe that he had the power. Right. And believe that when he said he was going to give that power to you, he did it. Yeah. He did it. This isn't a, you have that power if you feel good that day. <laughs> You have that power if you're a good person that day. If you look right, if you wear the right clothes, none of that matters. None of that matters. He didn't say maybe, like <laughs> Kevin, kingdom, kingdom, in your head. I'm just going to go with it, Kevin. Thanks. In your head is where your kingdom resides. You are the king. Right. You're soul, your mind, your will, and emotions yes. need to be brought into subjection to the king of kings yes. and then you rightfully yes. establish your kingdom yes. which rules over your earth, yes. your womb, yes. as yes. Pastor Rick says, your body. Yes. First you have to believe. believe. You yes. have it. You have it. It's there. Yes. It is there. If I had, well, at one time, I had a Firebird. I also had a Trans Am. Let's talk about the Firebird. Right. At one time, I had a Firebird. It was in my garage. It was paid for. Now, if I never took the keys and started that engine, it was still my Firebird. Right. It was still there. Right. If you have a million dollars in the bank and your name's on it and you never touch it and you don't acknowledge it, See, and that's the key. You have to acknowledge it. You have to, in order to appropriate something, in order to have something, you have to not only know you have it, which the devil's doing everything the devil can do to make sure that you don't understand that you have it. You have to know you have it, and then you actually have to do it, take it, own it, use it. How many of us, no, it's a rhetorical question, don't raise your hand. How many of us have giftings, callings? You don't follow instructions at all, young man. I said, don't raise your hand. <laughs> you have to sit right there. Um, how, many, how many of us know, know that Jesus died and paid the price for everything, everything we need? Yeah. Did you know that you were born with everything you need? Amen. And then the rest of your life is spent getting your mind and your will and your emotions to see it and to appropriate it. Yeah. As something that uh, Miles Monroe says, um, he says, the richest place on the planet is the graveyard. It's the cemetery. The richest place in the whole planet is the cemetery. Why? Because that's where everybody's million dollar idea died with them. Right. That's where everybody's amazing talent and gifts right. just died. Why? Because they never envisioned it and then grabbed a hold of it. Right. It's one thing to know you have it. Because you can sit in church your whole life and be told over and over and over again, well, you have this and you have that and you have this and you have that and your Firebird's sitting in the driveway. You said you had a 79? Ah, absolute pinnacle of Firebirds, by the way. I had an 81 and a 77 Trans Am. Um, the 79? Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
with the pig nose. I love those. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> Making up with the guy who's not following instructions here. Um, if you don't know you have it, that's one thing. Because you can be ignorant. Just, you just don't know. But now that you're in this room, you know on some level. And now the hard part begins. Am I going to actually grab it, own it, use it, control it, dominate it, bring it into focus and control my world and my kingdom? And for me and my house, yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. Yeah. As for me and my house, we know who our Lord is, yeah. who our owner is. Yeah. We know who our source, our Father, our King is. Yeah. And we will follow. And there might be days when it doesn't look so pretty, but it doesn't matter because we will do it. Right. And God will honor that and God will bless that. God will do it not because of you, but because of what Jesus did and because of his own name. Yeah. It says in the Bible that he will do it for his name's sake. He will do it for his own because he can't have his children walking around looking like morons and jerks and losers because you're not. You're not. Right. You're not. God paid too high of a price yeah. to buy back your kingdom Amen. and give it to you. Amen. To buy back that anointing. Yeah. To bring Christ to you individually, yeah. personally. Christ isn't a pie in the sky and a sweet right. by and by. I can't wait until I die and then right. I can get there and I can walk on streets of gold. That's great. Enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy it. But I wasn't saved for that. I was right. saved for this. This place, yeah. this place, you have control over your life. Yeah. You have control, and it might not be easy. Yeah. You might have to overcome a lot more than the person next to you. Praise God, there are people who can help. But it's yours. Sure. It's yours, and that's exciting. When you believe, then these good things, these God things, will follow you. But you know what? You are a creative genius. You are a creation factory. You were made to do what God does. Jesus said, greater works than these will you do because I go to the Father. Right. Amen? I'm not saying anything that isn't in Scripture. That's greater right. things will you do. Okay, what did he do? He walked on water. He fed 5,000. He did. Right. And, and John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God at the beginning. That's right. And that's Jesus. The one we know is Jesus in the, the flesh. That means that there's forgiveness of sin that you have control over. When you forgive someone in your mind, you have forgiven them in your kingdom. You have used the Christ in you to forgive you. And guess who else needs forgiveness? You. And I. And I can forgive me a lot slower than anybody else I know can forgive me. But I can still do it. And I can still be set free from that bondage. God spoke and created the world. God spoke and there was light. You have been made in the very image of God, which means that the words that come out of your mouth are creating things. You are a creation factory. You are a creative genius. Each and every one of us is creating our world at all times with our mouth. When I say, gee, Mark, you kind of suck, guess what? I'm cursing myself. When I look in the mirror in the morning and I say, you are a handsome man, and I do. Don't think I don't. <laughs> I am blessing myself. Bless yourself. Bless yourself. Don't beat yourself up. You know, the past is the past. In God's eyes, our sins are as far as the east is from the west. They're, they're, they're gone. They don't exist in God's eyes. So why not make those your eyes too? Why not do what the Father says? And make your sins as far as the East is from the West. I'm not saying don't learn lessons and get better. Of course you learn lessons and of course you get better. But open your eyes to the fact that God created something beautiful and it's right there in the mirror every day. Right. Every day. You know that it says that you believe and then 
From that, there's a set of consequences. It is a natural set of consequences if you believe for there to be good and powerful things following you. But that's not what you're to be focused on. Your eyes are to be focused on the prize. You're moving forward. You've got your hand to the plow. You're going forward. These good things are happening behind you. And they're just happening as a natural consequence of your relationship and who you already are. But if you believe something different, there's still consequences. There's still consequences. If you believe that I'm just a lowly worm, well, then maybe your life will be organized as such. If you believe, there's something, and God bless you if you're one of the people who say this, I don't mean this in any offense, but when I hear people say, I just want a, just a little shack right on the edge of heaven, that, can be, that would be good enough for me. Well, that's not what God says. God says that you're king. And that you're more than a conqueror through Christ and through what Jesus did. Let's go for it big. Go big or go home. God's got plenty. God's got plenty. Don't, don't fall into the mindset of, I'm just a lowly worm. I'll tell you something I told the praise team up in Janesville. I lead worship at a church in Janesville. And there's a, like 11 or 12 people. There's a million of us on that team. It's ridiculous. We fill up this stage and nobody can move. And, but we're all praising God and we're all having a great time. And the very first time we led worship together, we got done and people came up and they hadn't had a praise team in a while um, so anything would have been better than what they had and a few people came up and started telling some of the the team members oh that was so good oh wow god just oh i didn't know that you were that good that was so good and i heard one person after another say well, to God be the glory, because I'm just nothing. I'm just, just a humble, I'm absolutely nothing. I am just a lowly worm, and God is using me, and I'm just so humbled that God could use me. There's a place for that. And I know it was in their heart. I really did. But the next time we had rehearsal, which was just a couple days later, before we began, I sat everybody down, and I said, don't touch your instruments, I want to talk for a minute. I said, someone comes up, and says they appreciate how God has used you. And your response was, I'm just a lowly worm. I am unfit to enter into his presence, but I try and I just, I, 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 I. And then you just made it all about you, didn't you? you just made it all about you. The appropriate response is, thank you. I enjoy what I do. Isn't God good? And then you walk on because you're focusing on the past and you're bringing glory and attention to you when you live your life that way. Just keep walking. Just keep walking forward. Just enjoy that relationship. If I believe something, then there is a natural set of consequences that are going to follow. If I believe that I am an alcoholic, and I'm never going to be anything more or anything better than that, then my natural state is going to be, I may not ever drink again, but my natural state is going to be to think about that. Right. Why? Because you're making it about you. You're making it about this substance. You're making it about this God that isn't God. If I believe that a grizzly bear is a cute snuggly little thing and boy I just want to snuggle right up in his little paws and just enjoy a good cuddle there will be something that follows that other people can then see and hopefully learn by your belief so what you believe matters and what you speak matters and Jesus started off his ministry saying it Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Number one priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. What's another thing Jesus said? Jesus said when they asked him, when, when's the end going to come? When's the end of the world? When is all this stuff going to end? And Jesus said when the gospel of the kingdom is preached throughout the world, then the end will come. And to quote Pastor Rick, I don't see the gospel of the kingdom being preached even in most churches. 
I just don't. I see a lot of wonderful teaching about gospel. I hear uh, about Jesus. I hear a lot of great things about covenant. But I don't hear him talking about us taking charge and responsibility of our world and our life. You don't have responsibility for anybody else. You don't have control over anybody else, but you do have responsibility and control over you. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. All of this other stuff, it's just a natural consequence of your relationship. If my relationship is with alcohol, if my relationship is with stupidity, if my relationship is with imaginary grizzly bears, then I'm going to reap what I sow. If my relationship is with God and I'm focused on that and I'm just charging toward that, then what happens over here almost doesn't matter that much. That's, God, that's in God's hands. That's in God's hands. If you have beliefs that lead you to be a horrible person, then one of the consequences is you're going to teach that to your kids. And you're going to model that to your world. And your world is going to be a little more horrible for your beliefs, for your false beliefs. You know, what is a God in our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions? A God is something we hang on to. A false God is something we hang on to that is not God. That is not what God has said. And what God has said is that I love you so much that I will pay the price to put you back in proper position with me that Adam lost, that Christ, paid, that Jesus paid the price for, and now we can have that fellowship and we can have that relationship again. Amen? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. I'm also not gonna go on and on because we had a great time of worship and I don't wanna wreck that. But uh, my message to you is that the last things that Jesus said on this planet was, I have the power and the authority to do what I did and I'm passing it on to you and charging you with using that to build the kingdom the way it's supposed to be built. Follow the Holy Spirit. Listen, use that as a guide. Let the Christ inside you raise up, rise you up to where you are supposed to be. Let that control your actions and your decisions. And be blessed and have an absolutely wonderful week because I'm not going to I'm not gonna keep going. We're done here tonight. All right, we're going to give a couple of announcements. I'm going to have Larry come back up and close in prayer, if that's okay with you. Amen. Are we okay? We have a good night. Yeah. Um,